Hey y'all, Uncle Jimmy here. When you speak for yourself, you're forced to think for yourself. And when you think for yourself, the sports world looks different. In order to enjoy this podcast and this show, you need to have the courage to look at the world from alternative points of view and not be offended when you disagree. Speak for Yourself isn't your Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram feed. SFY tells you what you need to hear and not what you want to hear. So, welcome aboard, buckle up, and enjoy the ride. We're going to start with breaking news in the NFL, and I am piping hot, where the appeal of Miles Garrett's indefinite suspension was yesterday in New York, and according to ESPN, the Browns defensive end accused Mason Rudolph of using a racial slur during the brawl, before the brawl broke out. The Steelers issued a forceful denial of Garrett's accusation today, saying, quote, Mason vehemently denies the report of being accused of using a racial slur during the incident this Thursday night in Cleveland. He will not discuss this accusation any further, and his focus remains on preparation for Sunday's game against the Cincinnati Bengals. The NFL, meanwhile, announced that today that Garrett's indefinite suspension will stand. They reduced Marquise Pouncey's suspension, I believe, one game to two. Uh, hmm. Are we buying Miles Garrett here that Mason Rudolph provoked this with a racial slur? I certainly am not buying it. Uh, I'm disappointed uh, that Miles Garrett has gone this route. Doesn't surprise me. Uh, there was an ESPN reporter, Josina Anderson, who started this on Twitter the night that it happened, almost instantly, saying, oh, I, I would guarantee that uh, Miles Garrett's going to say that a racial slur was used. And voila, here we are a week later, and Josina Anderson is reporting that Miles Garrett at his deal uh, used a racial slur. Uh, this is the new standard for bad behavior. You do something wrong, you don't own it, you, you play the race card. Uh, Miles Garrett is, is, is a joke to me, and this, this story is a joke to me. I just don't buy it. I'm buying it, and I'm paying all cash. No credit card, uh, no layaway. Um, Josina Anderson and Adam Schefter reported this. In case we want to narrow that focus just on Josina and her initial reactions, Adam Schefter as well. Now, the reports makes you look at this situation only two ways. Do you believe Miles Garrett? Or do you believe what everything else is about this situation outside of what Miles Garrett is implying, what he's actually stating? And I will believe Miles Garrett because I don't have a reason not to believe Miles Garrett, but I have more than enough reasons to, be, to not believe in Mason Rudolph. Starting with one, yesterday in his scripted six days later press conference, that didn't show full contrition. That he actually went out there and, quote, said, I didn't escalate the situation. Oh, my eyes are lying. My eyes deceive me. Two, watching the film of the exact moment that all of this started, he's never taken full responsibility for any of those actions. But he has certainly allowed himself to take all of the response of his victimhood once he got hit. Now, he was not slammed to the turf. His head hit the turf. Incidentally, How does any of this say he used a racial slur? Huh? How does any of what you're saying say he used a racial slur? Because now, none of us has been at the bottom of a pile when this has happened. I have. No, 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 this. Th in this situation, let me say, in this situation, we weren't in the bottom of this pile. Well, but we've not, been in the bottom that, of the pile. Right, right. we've been but in the right. bottom of the pile before. Now, me, I've never been at the bottom of the power where I heard racial slurs. Wow. But I have been at the bottom of the power where I, I'm going to be what Mason Rudolph should be. I have hit people in a manhood. Yep. I have grabbed guts and torn and twisted them to a hopefully blood. Yep. I have stepped on fingers. And it was just the third game of the, week, of the year and second down. So in these situations, it's easy to sit up here in this emotional context and say what didn't happen, what did happen. But in that situation, from what I've seen, using Mason Rudolph as the narrator versus Miles Garrett as the narrator, my eyes have aligned with more of Miles Garrett's thought process than Mason Rudolph's. Go ahead. You want, well, I think it's complex in the sense that I have heard racial slurs. We all during, have. Right, during, during the course of games. Am I, I, I buy that it's possible it could have happened based off of Mason Rudolph's anger and rage in the moment. And, and just taking Miles Garrett out of it and, and his credibility out of it, 
I'm looking at how Mason Rudolph conducted himself during the course of the entire uh, exchange. And, and for me, things that I've experienced, people are, this is what confuses me a little bit. When I've heard racial slurs, and believe me, it goes both ways. Like, it's not a white to black thing. It goes both ways. I've always seen it in the heat of the game. You're trying to get a competitive edge. Can you get in their head? Can you get them off their square? But to me, in this situation, the game is over. The game is over, and you clearly see an enraged Let me player. ask you something. When you play football, <laughs> yep. yeah. particularly in the NFL, Who's more likely to use the N word on a football field? Well, we all know that. Oh, black. No, 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 no. But the N word no, we don't with, all the, with know the that. ER, with the ER. <laughs> <laughs> and so in a crowded don't. stadium, in a pile, he's he heard ER and knew that it was a white guy. Hold on, man. Don't act like we can't hear the play. No, no, we can't hear our, our signals. No, we no, can hear no, a lot. I'm talking about in this stadium, stadium. He's doing the sack of the quarterback. You can still hear. And he's and he they You're grabbing each other by the. You, you certainly you can still hear. And, and, and so <laughs> there was other people around. That were and, also, and not one black player reacted like they heard no, the ER. He was the only black who player present. Who, 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 what who is Marquise Palsy? Marquise came after. Later. Marquise came after. Come on, after. man. Stay in the moment now. Marquise came after. But, but here, again, the moment. there's no... There's, what I'm trying to understand... Is hey, that, we can't make excuses every freaking time think it's somebody excuse. does something inappropriate. Why are you connecting this to every other occasion? Because that's all this is. No, that's not This that's man not to this sit, The man that night sitting on the sidelines, post-game press conference, had every opportunity to yes, say, the guy called me the N-word. The, the, the Cleveland Browns organization got involved, I'm sure, and questioned him. The Haslam family puts out a statement basically apologizing to the Pittsburgh Steelers. If they thought this guy had been called the N-word by the Steelers player, no way the ownership does that. They still have to issue an apology. I, I, they still have not to, to the Steelers. All right, so here's what I would say. Using your own, your own context or your own words against you, six days later, you know, Mason Rudolph apologizes. Mm -hmm. If you are, if a, a racial slur is thrown at you mm -hmm. and this fight breaks out, I don't know any guy who isn't going to stand on a podium and say, hey, my actions were inexplicable. My actions were inexcusable. But this dude threw a racial slur at me. And not only that, I believe you issued a written apology to him. Mm -hmm. And now seven days later or six days later, now all of a sudden there was a racial slur. You, you've never mentioned it before? Yeah. I find that, I find that. Incredible. No, I, I don't, no, I don't, you I only find, find that incredible because now you're weighing the situation currently, but not weighing it the same the night of the game. Think about this. When he first, this all occurs in the moment. No one knows the full magnitude of this. Sure. Right? So, therefore, you don't give the full version. You're like, I did more wrong than him, so guess what? Let me just try to extinguish this by putting out a blanket statement, sincere or not. Then all of a sudden, you see it avalanche. You see it snowball. And you know what you say? Oh, well, if he's going to go full disclosure, or at least the weight of the public is going to be all on me, let me tell my entire version. Who knows if he was told that night from his team, his lawyers, hey, let's see if this all goes away. So only justify your saying, action after the weight of the story. I've been called an N-word on the football field in a college football game. Sure. I pointed over to the guy's teammates, defensive teammates, Eight of them black. One of them a friend of mine named Rudy Taylor. It's, wow. Y'all letting this dude do this? Y y this is, out, is this out of pocket at Northern Illinois University? This has happened in 1987. After the game, I went over to Rudy Taylor and his players by their bus. It was like, wow. Y'all let this happen? I went to my offensive line coach who coached at Northern Illinois and was friends with, with coaches on that other staff. I was like, man, Northern Illinois, they, they just out of pocket. This cat caught all game, blah, blah, blah. I, I'm not waiting. And, and, and Miles Garrett, with the weight of the world following, you just don't, uh, you know what, I'm going to wait till next week. To tell that this but, is garbage. But there, but, but, there are, guard, but, not, but there are other sides to that story. Right. I, mean, I, I was a part of a situation where, in a basketball game, we were playing an inner city school, Duke yep. ain't high. Yep. And they had they had a, they brought in a dude designated to get me out of the game by hacking me. He's hacking me the whole gotcha. entire game. We we get, get to, to the, the point. point. We win the game. The point is, 
He's, I'm at the free throw line. He calls me the N-word. Yep. Very, very insulting. The game is over. He plays for an all-black team. Yep. Calls me the N-word again. I punched him in his face. Yep. I get suspended. I, I reacted. Did not justify my actions, which Miles Garrett's not justify in his actions. But can it happen? Yes, it can but did happen. You tell, but did you matter. tell the coaches or anybody else that he called you the N-word? Or you did know, you wait for a week? To be honest with you, I don't, don't even... Don't, don't, LeVar, I don't please. even... Listen, I don't even remember... You waited a I, month. I, no, I didn't wait. I didn't, to now was the first I wasn't time getting, you I wasn't story. getting interviewed. No, what he did was wait for the appropriate... He got well, in the they had right after the well, game. They were going to shoot man. us. They, they were waiting let me to just shoot say, us. Let me nah, just say this. Right. We had to get up let, out let, of there. let me say this, too, about Miles Garrett, because, I, again, I'm, I, when this happened last week, the first thing I did was start trying to just gather information. Who is Miles Garrett? Where did he want Miles Garrett. The, the, he, he's a nerdier dude that's not really it part it. of, doesn't really fit into the stereotypical black thing. And I'm just sorry. That's where this comes from. I'm sick and tired of the Jussie Smollett's, the Colin Kaepernick's, the <laughs> Miles Garrett's, the guys working out their identity issues right. through racial, through racial race carding, and everybody. Oh my God! They, the, the, uh, Mason Rudolph said we're in MAGA country, and I, I slammed my helmet on him. I'm get, not get, trying, it's I'm garbage. Not to... It's BS. We know damn well in the middle of this football game, at the end of this football, an NFL quarterback. Now tell me, if this was some defensive lineman, I would halfway believe it. Halfway believe it. Mm. But a damn quarterback... Well, if they said he was trying to rip his helmet off, not tug his helmet off, if they yeah. said the quarterback you were was trying to rip, would you believe that? You were on much firmer ground there. You were on much firmer. But trust me, that's part of the BS, too. Well, because you know what? again, we try to justify every it's damn thing. And what you're this trying man to do slamming is the guy everything. over the head... You it's unjustified. Hold Mason on, your Rudolph. stereotypes are improperly labeled. So let's say this. Doesn't matter what position you play. If you got a racial slur in you, you got a racial slur in you. Two, the same Mason Rudolph who said, let the world talk for him and said, I didn't escalate this. I got still pictures showing me that you sure you didn't? First of all, everyone's saying that Mason Rudolph was slammed to the turf. Last time I checked, if you and Marcellus, this is part of the problem. If, 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 no, no, this because, is part this, of the solution a, because you're going to give got... me, you're going to give me an actor who is on his contract year with a show that's going off and say, Justy Smollett is this. This is not the same. This is not analogous. This is a guy who told me he was slammed to the turf, but last time I checked, He's you the one on top. top. Now this is a guy who at the top left window who says my hand was stuck under the helmet. The this world isn't says, a subruder. Guess film what situation. I see? I see a quarterback card. Why, how is that stuck if the quarterback card is out? I get, well, All wow. I'm saying is, Miles Garrett has not said anything to me that I can show in evidence that is a lie. But Mason Rudolph has. So when you ask me, when I don't know, who do I believe? The one who hasn't lied to me just yet. Well, the, the, the picture of him on top is after they hit the ground. <laughs> and then they rolled over. I mean, you can't put a still frame up there. I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why Miles Garrett. I'm going to tell you why Miles Garrett. I'm going to tell you why Miles Garrett's doing this. Because he knows he's got a bunch of people that will sell this BS. That's exact. Because it started when we tried to justify him slamming the guy over the helmet with, oh, the quarterback tried to rip his helmet off, and therefore the only reaction is to slam his, slam his helmet atop him. It's garbage. Well, like, we has anyone ever used excuses. a racial slur and it actually you just didn't question it? Like, in this situation, like, is there, is there a possibility in your head? I just your told you a story no, no, no. of what happened to me. Right, and you were not in this context. So in this context, could you imagine a scenario yes. where Mason Rudolph actually used it? Yes. Okay. If, and I'm going to tell so you the scenario. Scary? The scenario where I would believe it is if after the game, Miles Garrett has stood up in front of everybody and said, damn, this dude called me a name. Seven days later... Are you kidding me? I don't think you believe it. No, no. I don't think you believe it if Miles Garrett stood up. He said something it. was said at the press I don't think conference. You believe it. it would and have I, more credibility. But to me. But would I believe it? Yes, the N word gets you to the football field. To me, field. The, vo the, the focal is on Miles Garrett, and it should be on Mason Rudolph. I'm not trying to justify or legitimize Miles Garrett's I, play. I, hey, hey LeVar, I'm I looking get it. at Mason well, Rudolph and his actions so in again, the moment. You're, you're, was you he capable just, of doing Just understand that? what you just argued. Yes. All right. That the focus shouldn't be on the person who got hit over the head with a helmet. It should be on the person no, no, that the, the the threw the helmet. The it should be on the person that got hit on the head with the helmet. That's where the focus... Let's attack 
the victim. And again, I get he's why Miles Garrett is doing it. He got hit over the head with a helmet, LeVar. Not, he, he was victimized Didn't in that moment. Didn't he say something he was happened, in that something moment. was said after the game? No, he... No, he, okay, he, yes, he, yes, he, he inferred it. He inferred it. He so, hold on, and then now you have now been told by multiple PR people, including your team, you're going to have the appropriate setting to tell your story. And now you're going to hold that against him? Was he enraged? Was was Mason Rudolph enraged long before he got hit in the head? Can we all agree on that? Yes. Was Was he he enraged? Sure. Okay. Was he enraged? Sure. So, to me, why are we not focusing in on the fact if somebody is enraged, is it possible that you (laughs) could say something out of character while you're enraged? I don't think that's justifying anything. Okay, okay, okay. Right. I'll give it to you. He he might say something. And that does not justify Miles Garrett. Right, right. So who's enraged now? Who's facing a one-year potential suspension? Who's looking at a million dollars out of their pocket down the line? Who's enraged now? And who's capable of lying and escalating the situation now? Mason Rudolph's going to pay a fine and he's done. No, I'm holding him to the same standard you're holding Mason Rudolph to. Mason Rudolph, he was enraged. And he must have said this. He said this in a private And so now, Miles Garrett is enraged, facing a year suspension, potentially longer. I don't think he's enraged. But you know what? He's scared. I don't scared. think either one of you Maybe know. Not this, was said, know. It, this was said in an appeal hearing in he's, a private yeah. setting. Now, if you guys want to leak this and get this out there, fine. But I'm going to have less than a two-hour window in a private setting, supposed to be confidential, and I'm going to tell you exactly well, who do you how think it leaked it? Hold on. Adam Schefter? Stop. Oh, his name's up it. Play or you want to just go Joe Cena? Cena. Anderson and Adam started Schefter. it. First, I started it. The damn I'm the game first one on record talking about y'all better look at Mason Rudolph. I ain't leaked Jack. Hey, it's ever Adam Mar- Marcellus. 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 Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Marcellus. Marcellus. Yes. Josina Anderson in- instantly said this. While the- damn, the game wasn't even- was barely over. Mm. That I guarantee you, uh, someone said something racial. Hey, that's and now intel. she's and now she she's- didn't say racial. She's- I'm just saying. Egregious. She, didn't say she said something. That's not racial. He also said the B word. We caught him on camera with the B word already. Y'all don't want to go down that lane, Mason Rudolph going B word to o- Obugu, whatever. You don't want to go there, huh? We saw that. Are we going to argue uh, that I, one? I no, I'm not going to okay, argue. Then. So again, if he was B word, he way too much, much to, to be sitting here like, oh, my God, I'm, I'm shocked and enraged no, that no, he I'm used just the saying, B word. My eyes have showed me a lot of contradictions in Mason's testimony such far. And guess what? I also got you on camera saying the B word. And you're trying to say it's out of the realm of possibility. I would, I would say, say I would else. just say this. Like, on, there's never, there's, it, it's not okay to use a racial slur. You, as you mentioned, but they happen. it, it happens, right? Yeah, they happen. But there's a far cry bes- between somebody using a racial slur and somebody having a helmet in his hand and taking a hack at somebody's head. Agreed. Very true. Okay. Agreed. One and, does and no argument. The right. Other. Still yeah. doesn't mean you didn't yes. say the slur. That's all I'm saying. I'm buying Miles Garrett here. That's all I got. Doesn't justify Miles Garrett. No, no, no. It's not just. But I'm buying Miles that he. Garrett. So I mean, Don't to me, you. regardless of what happened, he to still should be it all, judged based off of yeah, what yeah. he did. Based on the action. That's correct. And the action correct. is inappropriate. That's and but he's never not be trying to be judged on that because he's got people willing to sell this BS. Hey guys, this is Jason Whitlock from Speak for Yourself. Are you ready for what's ahead? You can't always predict the future, but you can game plan for it. Generations of families and businesses have harnessed the power of Pacific to help them reach their unique goals. Whether you need to save enough money to meet your needs, ensure your family is protected, or make sure you don't run out of money, Pacific Life has a variety of financial solutions that can help. Pacific Life counts more than half of the 100 largest U.S. companies as its clients and has been named one of the 2019 world's most ethical companies by the Ethisphere Institute. Protecting what matters most to people for 150 years and counting, that's the power of Pacific. Ask a financial professional about how Pacific Life can help you game plan for the future or visit pacificlife.com. With Lock and Wiley, Mark Slareth is back. We're joined now by Fox NFL analyst TJ Hushman's out of time now for a big story sponsored by KFC's $20 fill-up. Order ahead or get it delivered at KFC.com. All right, let's return to Miles Garrett, who, according to ESPN, has accused Mason Rudolph of using a racial slur that allegedly triggered the brawl at last week's Brown Steelers game. Garrett has addressed the fight multiple times in the media without ever mentioning the slur until he reportedly brought it up as part of his appeals hearing in New York yesterday. Today, the NFL upheld Garrett's suspension. 
while reducing Marquise Pouncey's suspension mm. by one game. All right, uh, I, this is a pretty obvious question. <laughs> Have you lost any respect for Miles Garrett? This is what they work on in <laughs> football all the time. Chemistry, when you just know what I'm going to do. No, I have not lost any respect for Miles Garrett. Um, and I don't know why I should. Uh, based he's on taking a coward's way out. Based on what we're talking about here. Look, swinging a helmet at someone is obviously something that makes you lose respect because we all try to go home to our families at the end of the day. I don't give a damn how good I am, how sorry you are, how I can run up the score. Go home. I go home. I lost respect then. I have not lost more respect now. And I tell you why. Everyone out there is running with this claim. You, we've never seen anyone in the NFL ever do such a thing and use their helmet as a weapon and hit somebody like that. Outside of Antonio Smith, Richie, incognito, kind of. Well, actually, LeVar did with a player for the Washington Redskins, but we'll get into that yeah, later in yeah. the practice. But so, go ahead. We, we, this is what? We've never seen this. But you know what you haven't seen? A guy charge after somebody when he doesn't have his helmet. Like, every single player I know, something triggers in our head. Oh, I'm at a disadvantage. Peace treaty. We'll, de we'll deal with this another time. I'll be back. We play you guys again in a few weeks. So, we have to keep this in perspective. Why would I lose respect for Miles Garrett, who is basically saying things that either I can prove in evidence of watching the actual play, or some things that I just have to chalk up to? I wasn't there, like at the Hold bottom on, of that power. Miles Garrett charge, other than the racial slur, what else have you heard him charge? Has, has he charge? said I got kicked in the groin? Has he said I, I, that? I don't need Miles Garrett to do that. Okay, well, let's don't say uh, Miles no, no. Garrett said well, that. No, right. Miles Garrett is saying, look, there was provocation in this situation. Yeah, he's saying the racial slur. Yep. Yeah. He has That's not said, he has not, That's as far as I it. know, he has not said I was kicked, I was this, that. Now, maybe he did in those meetings, not, but I haven't, I'm not, I don't know I'm that. saying what the evidence shows me, gotcha. Miles Garrett has no contradictions to that. Mason Rudolph does. Yeah, I, I have lost respect in that. One, I'm a believer that we're in this thing together as players. And yeah, I'm, if I get a chance to get a kill shot on you, am I going to take it? You're doggone right. Hmm. And I would expect you to do the same. If we throw an interception, Marcellus, and I'm going to chase it, and I've been holding you the whole game, I expect to get one square right here. I just do. I mean, that's the game I grew up in. And so I have a lot of respect for that. But when it comes to something that's so over the line, was something that has malicious intent, I, that, is, that is a cause for me to lose respect for you as a man. Let, let me, let yeah, me yeah. add this. I don't okay. know if you're finished, but I, there have been two kill shots taken now. That, that, let's remember. The helmet was the first one, and now this one here dirties this man's reputation to a point he could be damaged. So there's been two, there's been two kill shots trying to damage someone, and both have been taken at Mason Rudolph. No, I, have I lost respect for him? No. The, the helmet thing made me lose respect because... You could have really hurt him. You, you dodged a bullet with, with that part of it. How I look at it is, I would have preferred, whether Mason Rudolph said this or not, I would have preferred for Miles Garrett to, even in his appeal, say, he says some things that he, he knows he said, and that's why I reacted the way I did. I'm not going to get into it, and it's no justification for what I did. And when I see him, we'll be able to talk that out. I've already apologized to him. I hope he would do the same. That's what I would prefer. But TJ, he said that exact same thing after the game. He said, there's some things said. I'm going to leave that out of here. But then he went to the closed setting and said exactly what those things were. What's wrong with that? I, I, don't, I don't see the problem. I just don't, I don't want it to, oh, he said a racial slur so it can justify everything that I did. Now, if you say that to me, if I take the helmet off, I'm probably going to choke you at the bottom of the... Like, I'm going to... I'm not letting you get up. Mm -hmm. He did. That, that, that's okay. Losing respect is when you could literally send this man to the hospital and possibly hurt him by hitting him with the crown of the helmet. That's the part where you say, we're in this together. I want to win, and I'll try to hurt you, but I'm not trying to hurt you to the point where it damages your career and possibly your life. I'm not trying to do that. And now, based off an allegation that... We'll never be able to prove. It's a he said, she said. Right. Uh, Mason Rudolph is going to pay a price for this. The first one, he tried to hit him over the head with a helmet, which could have hurt him really significantly. Now he's going to pay a price. We know how social media works. We know how the internet works. We know how fans operate. Whether Mason Rudolph said it or not, this guy's going to be staying with 
saying he he a racial slur against uh, Miles Garrett. There's no proof of it. There's just an accusation. We've seen false allegations like this before. I've covered this as a journalist. I, I, I can sit here and name names. North Carolina player uh, playing Utah, going with the stereotype. This is a, a University of North Carolina player. Not going to go into... I can name the name of the guy in Northern Illinois if I wanted to smear this person. I don't. I don't have an interest in that because I'm not trying to damage people. Miles Garrett is trying to damage Mason Rudolph. They had a little on-field scrap that Miles Garrett took too far. Period. If Miles Garrett never swings that helmet, no one ever gets suspended. None of this ever happens. Now that it has happened, based off his actions, now we have this and a second attempt to hurt this kid, Mason Rudolph. I don't believe it. I've lost respect for Miles Garrett. I've, I, I know the profile of the Miles Garrett, the goofball that wants to be tough, and that's why he's had all these problems all season. He's, try, he's been penalized for dirty hits. He's had a terrible year in terms of penalties, in terms of his reputation. And on the way out the door, let me try to take Mason Rudolph down instead of just owning it. So I agree Mason with Mason Rudolph did say it, because of all that you said about Miles Garrett, you're saying he should just... If Mason... Take- Oh, no, 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 TJ, I I operate in the world as an adult and even as a young person. I don't care what somebody calls me. I don't care. It's not going to provoke me to come out of character. But you're testifying for Miles Garrett right now. Who said, who said in the moment that he stated facts to him, these are my stated facts, and I'm only going to state the facts that I can prove or I'm going to state the matter of facts And then that's what I was going under in my emotional state. The court of public opinion has largely married what Mason Rudolph is selling, which is basically all of this occurred to me and I was trying to protect myself. Mason Rudolph's not selling it, Marcellus. The the referees, the NFL. They didn't even call a flag on the play. They did throw a flag. They did not call a flag for that hit. They called a flag for when he was pulling the helmet off and what Mason... And then he swung at him. I get but, it. They threw the flag. But, but Mason, Mason Rudolph isn't selling anything. Bush, he reacted Bush to what happened. Bush League and cowardly? Hold it on. Was. From what point, Mason? Uh, well, if you get off your scripted... That's contr- the same statement. sales job that uh, Miles Garrett's he did, teammate... He said he didn't escalate That's it. the same sales job that Baker Mayfield also had after the game and Freddie Kitchens had after the game and most people had after the game. It's no, TJ, where I really agree with you is, let's say it did happen. Mm-hmm. To me, you got to be man enough a week later to say, you know what, if I hadn't swung the helmet, I'd still be in the league, and so I'm going to swallow and eat all of this. He, no, I'm, he already I'm gave his see, apology. I'm going to see Mason Rudolph again, hopefully. He I'm going to get back in the league. The, the Cleveland Browns are going to see Mason Rudolph again. If, and so, there's a, to me, there's a manly way to handle it. This is not... This is a coward's way out. This, again, this, you're playing the game of football. There's no, there's a code in here. I saw the same kid that I was talking about in Northern Illinois, I saw him the next year, the most polite kid I ever played against. We played against each other all year. There was no suspension or wanting him out of the game. Just like, y'all, One, y'all playing for free. Y'all ain't playing for no game checks. What? I mean, come on, man. Use, okay. use analogies that are analogous. One, one of the things that everybody says in the NFL all the time, it's a cliche, is that the best ability is availability. You hear that all the time. To me, in these situations, the best ability is responsibility. Take it. Own it. Accept it. Regardless of what happened, nothing will mitigate what you did. It won't. What you did was, in any other walk of life, criminal. So you need to stand there and you need to own that as a man and say what I did was despicable, uh, reprehensible, and I will accept whatever punishment is doled out to me. I throw myself on the mercy of the commissioner of the NFL and I apologize. And James Thrash. And there's nothing else that will do that. The black arbitrator of this for the NFL there's a reason they upheld the suspension indefinitely. They're not buying it. It's not no about one. buying Whitlock. It's about what Mark said. What I did, there is no excuse. But why I did it, 
Let me give you two hours of talk. Why are you dry, guys trying to take that away from him? He's just telling you his emotional because state of mind. at some point, it. you raising kids, Marcellus, at some point, you don't want to hear the why. No, I do, actually. I always want to hear the why. You got you the wrong brother You're different than my parents. No, no, no. You're the, different than my parents. You know what? The we why are. don't matter. My birth certificate doesn't say that. I got it. But guess what? I want to know what you did, but when we come home, why you do it? So I can correct that microprocessor so that next time when you're in that same what situation, you know why you should do something else. Why can't he testify on his own behalf? I, that's, that's an American birthright, but not for Miles Garrett because Look, what you did, everyone deserves a trial. Everyone deserves their state. And you're saying he does it because he did the worst of the indiscretions? I don't think he does because, one, I don't buy it. That's just me. Okay. But two, even if true, it doesn't justify his behavior, does so much harm to Mason Rudolph Aww. that it's just inappropriate. Look, Who broke the code I, first? I, I, I don't I, know. I, oh, what I, do you mean? I do. I, I think I the code was the guy slamming it. Everything that happened before the slamming, I see it every Sunday damn near. Mm -hmm. Everything that happened before he hit the dude with the helmet, you see it every it was, Sunday. It was, That's part it, of it, the it code. It was part of every pile you were in. Mm-hmm. And, and everything. And, and, and it's still and a first pile. domino that falls. And so, if that helmet yeah. comes well, off, I, if my helmet comes off and I'm, I'm getting I'm, into it, I'm tapping out. I'm like, I'm not going to run up on you because <laughs> I'm at a disadvantage. Well, yeah. Again, he made a dumb decision to run up on him, but he, it's not a... Still not just. It doesn't provoke. Yes. It's a, and, oh, okay, because really, I run up on you, I should slam you with and, the helmet. And if we're throwing culpability here, how about the NFL, who's made quarterbacks feel like they're untouchable? Mm. Like you don't get to play the game anymore, Right. There is some there is there is some responsibility on the uh, on the part of the NFL who has made the quarterback position a position that's non-contact. Yeah. And so when a guy goes to the ground like that, I can't tell you every guy I see, every game I call, if a guy goes to the ground, he's like looking for a flag. Like, can you believe this? The audacity of an NFL player to hit me, a quarterback? Right. So part of that, if you really want to say where does this the root start, it may just start with the way the league calls penalties. Very true. Mm. I, if we're going to be this easily triggered, if white people can just call it and we're going to be easily triggered and we're going we're gonna to start breaking the law because, oh my God, they called us a man, we'll all be in jail. Mm. I'm not going. Oh man. All right, welcome back to Speak for Yourself, presented by Hyundai, Whitlock and Wiley, joined now by NBA champion Brian Scalabrini and USA Today NBA writer Mark Medina. Let's move to the Staples Center where Kawhi Leonard and Paul George just took the floor together for the first time since joining forces on the Clippers and were able to pull out an overtime win over a very good Celtics team. The Clippers are now at full strength, which makes them a more formidable opponent in the Battle of L.A. against LeBron's Lakers team that is off to a red-hot start. The question here is, are the full-strength Clippers better than the Los Angeles Lakers? Yes, they are. Um the less than full strength Clippers are better than the Los Angeles Lakers. Y'all see the first game of the year? They yeah. played each other already. Okay, so, <laughs> I mean, this, this answers itself, but let's just talk about the layers of the Clippers' greatness. Uh, top layer, just like the Lakers. You got two stars, dynamic duo. And then you start looking at the grades of the Lakers three through seven, and you look at the grades of the Clippers players three through seven, and two stand out for the Clippers. Montrez Harrell, and obviously Lou Williams. You got an offensive cyclone and a defensive tornado coming in to say, we're going to play against your $900,000 players in your second line. And that's where I think the game changes when you talk about the Clippers. The Lakers got off to a fast start against the Clippers. No Kuzma, I respect that, in game one. But they get off to a fast start. But then we got to come with our backups, our reserves, who are really starters in this league. And that's when the game changes. The, the biggest thing is, the regular season versus the playoffs. The Clippers are built for the playoffs. The Clippers are built to challenge LeBron better than any team besides the Golden State Why Warriors. The playoffs instead of the regular season? Just because of low game, management? It, it goes, well, part of it is going to be the injury. But part of it is going to be <laughs> to slow it down, the pace. It's going to be get your offense. The Lakers aren't going to be able to show time up and down the floor. The Lakers aren't going to be able to put LeBron and AD and run two-man game and then run that play to death in the playoffs. You make adjustment. You're going to go to have to go to third option, to fourth option, because people are going to take that stuff away. Now, one thing we have to recognize is the greatness of LeBron. And maybe mm -hmm. he has another one of those moments where we sit back and say, I thought that Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, Pat Beverly, Montrez Harold, mm -hmm. Jermichael Green, those bodies thrown at LeBron was going to be enough. 
but he goes into his back pocket and digs deeper than we've ever seen him before. Mm. Scott, not only are the Clippers built better for the playoffs, but they're preparing themselves better for the playoffs. Right now, they've been doing the load management on Kawhi. They've been patient with Paul George sitting out the first 11 games. You look at the Lakers, they cannot afford to sit LeBron and AD for an extended period of time. So right now, the Clippers, I don't think, are better than the Lakers, with exception to that season opening win. But they're going to be a lot more healthy because they are sitting these guys. They have the reinforcements. So when they meet in that seven-game series, I'm going to take the Clippers. Mm. I am on board with the Clippers, but LeBron keeps raising doubts for me. Because uh, how long is he going to be able to do this? That's unbelievable. Th this is incredible. Mm. He's elevated to another. He's trying to win another MVP. And until I see him slow down, I'm going to have a little bit of hesitation before I, I just go. And I wasn't expecting this. Coming into the year, I'm all in on the Clippers. It's, it, it's a mismatch. Seeing LeBron operate at this level in year 17 has shocked the hell out of me. I don't think he sus can sustain it, but I don't think it's smart to doubt LeBron J. You know what we probably didn't think about? From Christmas Day last year, all the way up until the start of the season, this year, he played one month of uninspired basketball. I'm talking about LeBron James right here. What was Kawhi Leonard doing? Carrying teams through the playoff, battling Philly through oh. seven games, battling the Warriors on the road. He was going through all that, and LeBron was rested, lifting, shooting movies, but getting ready for this season. I did not take that into account when I thought how good LeBron was going to be. I thought it was going to be a continuation of last year. Last year's in the past. He's rested. He looks he looks like he turned back the clock five years. I don't know if I would call this rested. What I call this is someone else, once again, using other people's, other people's fuel to gas their engine. So he's using us as his motivation. You ever race somebody and it gets hyped up? I did this race against Keyshawn Johnson, Mark Key race. All it was was false starts and everyone had to be, I'm gonna beat you, I'm gonna beat you. And they go. It's a marathon, though. Wait, so wait, you wait, get wait, so, wait. Tell me I about this race. No, 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 I I'm about trying that. to picture okay. I got you and Keyshawn. Oh, it, it, it wasn't pretty. I smoked him. But here's the thing. You get into a mindset where all that matters to you is how it looks when you start. But this is a different marathon. And I'm telling you right now, they're using so much of their gas up, whether it's psychologically or just physically, because they have to make an impression where the Clippers don't. Wait, what makes you when you watch LeBron? Now, I, I would agree at the beginning of the year, but when you watch LeBron right now, and I, you guys know I'm not a big LeBron cheerleader at all. Yep. But when you watch him right now, what makes you think he's slowing down? Like, give me, you got to tell me. Inform me, because I'm not seeing it. Yeah, I'll tell you what makes him slow down. The fact that the way that he's playing, the physicality of that, that wears and tears on uh, you at this we age. We think. We think. We think. You're right. You're right. Here, here's where I thought it LeBron. Last year. This <laughs> is where I thought LeBron could never go back to. And, and he has. And it shocked me. He's all in. Mm. And last year he wasn't. And I thought the Hollywood thing and all the little things go, that he had going on on the side prevented him from going all in. If, you know, Darnell and, and, and a few other of our guys go to a lot of these Lakers games and they tell me in the locker room the chemistry that LeBron has with this group of teammates, he's all in in a way that he just wasn't last year. I didn't think he could get back to this mental place. He's behaving and working with Frank Vogel. It's hard for me to doubt so LeBron. Chemistry saves the growing, huh? I don't okay. have any doubts about LeBron James. He's <laughs> rested, motivated. He knows when to be aggressive, when to defer to Anthony Davis. But I have some doubts about Anthony Davis. Can he stay healthy? That last few he's years, already hurt. his whole career, he's missed an average of 14 games, and he's already been hurt. He's been dealing with the shoulder injury. Now, let me be clear. Anthony Davis has a very high pain threshold. He's been very aggressive through playing through contact, but there's no way around it. There's going to be injuries that are going to be coming up this season that's going to force him to be out of the lineup and the Lakers can't afford that. LeVar Arrington and TJ Hushmanzada are back. Time now for Darnell's question of the day. Darnell, take it away. Yes, sir. Let's move to Dallas, where Dak Prescott still hasn't gotten his new contract he's been seeking. Dak has been putting up the biggest numbers of his career, and questions are flying about why he hasn't been paid yet, including from a legendary Cowboys QB, my guy Troy Aikman. Take a listen. I really do not know why he has not yet been paid. And, and, and that's, that's not a criticism of anyone's. Um, I, don't, I don't know if it's just that they're so far apart. 
I don't think there's any doubt they want to sign him. I don't think he can show anything more than he's already shown. What's being said now is, hey, we love you. You know, we're going to pay you. You're not going anywhere. But until that actually happens, I, I do think there's not doubt, but I think there's there's some questions as to, okay, well, how committed are they really to me? If Dak were to be signed, I think it would give him a lift, and I think it would give this team a lift. Got to ask you guys, you think it's understandable that the Cowboys haven't paid Dak yet? Hell yeah. And if he wants to give <laughs> the team a lift, Dak mm. Prescott needs to beat the Patriots. Then mm. they'll have a lift for the team. And trust me, they'll lift that contract to wherever Dak wants it. Let him beat the Patriots, then pay. Agree. Uh, Look, this is easy to understand why they're taking their time. One cost. Uh, Dak, if he gets $40 million, somewhere around there, it's going to be five years, $200 million. But if you just take your time and say, you know what? What's the franchise tag le- next year? 33.4? Oh, oh. What's it going to be the year after that? 40? Wait a minute. If I don't pay him long term, he's going to be cheaper if I just franchise him for two years, which gives the Cowboys three years to answer the most important question. Is are these numbers this improving as a quarterback going to take us to Tom Brady, to the pay dirt, to the promised land, or to Philip Rivers and Matthew Stafford? We're a lot of numbers, but Carson we're not Wentz. over there. Carson Wentz. So the point of this is, why not wait? More importantly than everything I just said, there's pressure on Dak Prescott, and look how he responds. Why not keep that pressure on Dak Prescott for the cheap? and let him continue to respond. I don't understand it, and the reason I don't understand it because it's it's almost unprecedented that you have a quarterback that has shown you, I can get it done, and you don't want to pay him. The Ravens did this with Flacco. They ended up paying him a lot more than they, they would have liked. There's no way Dak Prescott wants $40 million. He'll take it. You're not going to jump Russell Wilson by $5 million per year. I believe it's in a $33 million range, just more than Carson Wentz and Jared Goff. Now, they'll say, oh, we love you. Oh, we want you to be our quarterback, but we all know in the lot. You can't tell me that. You show me by the contract that you offer me whether you love me and you want me on the team. And so mm. it doesn't make any sense. Hope, I'm, it's going to work out, and it's going to work out in Dax Prescott's favor because what he wanted, they're going to end up having to give him a lot more than that by the way he's going to play. Yeah, I'm with TJ on this one. I, he's going to be your guy. You look at him as your franchise guy. I don't see there being an issue with you paying them the money. Now, you come back, you say you want that $40 million. I understand that. But to the point, if you are looking to build a, a Super Bowl contending team, they're in good, good position right now, and a lot of that is because Dak has been the, the you know, Got the, the fifth best record in the NFC. They're in good yeah, position. Yes, <laughs> because they're leading their division. Defense they are they're leading their, their division. division. Their defense is letting them down. That, that's why no they're... And, and, and it's not Dak that's letting him down. And, and certainly he's outperforming the guy that they gave the money to on the offensive side of the ball. And you can't say that his success is in any way the reason Understand why about that Cowboys haven't paid Dak yet. Yes. Oh, it is understand. It's, it's understand. No, I said I was agreeing yes to what <laughs> yes, I that's understood. The I answered the question. Yes, that's the question. Based but off no, the question, I disagree. Yes, yes I, <laughs> it's not I disagree. I think they should have paid. I think they should have paid him by now because they have no intention. But why? Because they have no intention. It's a, it's a to muscular go. move. It serves multiple purposes. It does. One, it's cheaper to franchise him out based on the expectations of what he's going to get. And two, four months ago, the court of public opinion on Dak Prescott was what? Enough to slow play him and shortchange him and franchise him Kirk Cousins style to make sure he's not but Kirk what Cousins. About direct relationship. Things are like to me. I, the one of the things that I've always what about admired, being a good team? How about that? Can we just start there? What, this what, year? Word you just, again, it's a team. His team is. No, no, no. I understand that. His team he's, hasn't helped him. He's fitting to see Stephon Gilmore and Jason he, McCourty. Let's talk after that. Everybody's we can talking talk about Sunday night. Their offense was behind everybody else. You get an offensive coordinator that's opening up, and they're letting you throw the ball. All I'm saying, Sunday night, we can have a One conversation. Game. So no, I want to see him against the top five defense. So if he performs, you're going. He performed Sunday. We coming in here on we, Monday. Your tune changed. Pay him. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. No, I, mean, I, I, don't find, I don't find that to be justifiable. I, I think mm. his approach to the season has been right. It's been correct, and they probably should have paid him by now. Now, wh- whether the number is right for him or the number is right for Dallas, that's the, the bigger issue to me. But they we'll be in here talking about twenty eight million on. Monday. <laughs> 
All right, welcome back. Whitlock and Wiley, Mark Slareth, and TJ Hushmanzad are back. Yeah. All right, let's talk some Thursday night football. As you all know, Dark Knight Rises is my favorite Batman movie. I love Bane. I love the mid-movie fight scene between Bane and Batman. Up until last Sunday afternoon, I thought Houston Texans quarterback Deshaun Watson was the NFL's Batman, the superhero who beat you with brains, gadgets, and skill. Now I'm not so sure. Lamar Jackson of the Baltimore Ravens shook my faith in Watson. Baltimore's 41-7 trouncing of the Texans shook me the way Catwoman was shook watching Bane beat the crap out of Batman in the sewers beneath Gotham. Deshaun fought like a younger man. Nothing held back. Admirable, but mistaken. <laughs> I was wondering what would break first, his spirit or his body. It's my best Bane impression. <laughs> it took Batman months to recover from what Bane did to him. He was trapped in a prison cave in a faraway country. He had to relearn everything and remake himself. Deshaun has had just four days since Lamar and the Ravens embarrassed him physically, mentally, and emotionally. And now tonight, can Houston's Dark Knight quarterback rise again and perform at a high level against the resourceful Indianapolis Colts? I have no confidence. I'm still at a loss to explain what happened Sunday. It was such an immature performance from a quarterback who appears so mature. Did Watson choke? Was the hype too much? Was he trying to do too much? Was he trying to win the MVP on every play? Whatever the cause, he finished the game with 169 passing yards, 12 rushing yards, one interception, and one fumble. He went from an MVP favorite to someone I want to evaluate the rest of the year before I decide whether he's a poor man Steve Young or a flash in the pan Carson Wentz. Mm. Thursday's games are always tough. This one has to be incredibly difficult for Watson. Much of sports is played between the ears, particularly at the quarterback position. You want to take the field feeling confident and invincible. The great ones shake off what happened to Watson on Sunday. Can you do it in four days, though? That's the challenge for Watson. A week after the Patriots made Sam Darnold see ghosts, the Jaguars spooked Darnold into three interceptions and another loss. The week after that, Darnold was mediocre again in the Miami Dolphins' first victory of the season. Bad performances and bad losses linger. They introduce doubt into a locker room. They make a team like the Texans wonder if they can win games without J.J. Watt and Jadavion Clowney. They make you question everything, including the quarterback, who was an MVP favorite just five days ago. Can the Texans' dark night rise and save Space City tonight? I'm not optimistic. All right, guys, Marcellus. Yes, sir. Get us rolling. Think Deshaun Watson bounces back tonight? I think he does. Uh, best indicator of future behaviors, past behaviors. So let's check his bounce-back resume. And we look at a Deshaun Watson... Uh, who's had four previous games with no passing touchdowns like he did. And then he follows those games with over three touchdowns per game. So that means I can go from zero to three plus after a bad performance. You look at him, and Watson has gone 4-1 in his, his career so far with a low passer rating, 75 or lower, which we saw last weekend. And guess what? He comes back after that with the proper response. So I'm looking at him like... He's going to play well, and he's going to do what he does, which is put it behind him. It seems like this is one of those guys who has the right mindset. As Coach says, don't get too high, don't get too low. Uh, I don't think it was an MVP discussion. I don't think it was anything but playing against the Baltimore <laughs> Ravens, as the Patriots have found out and many teams have found out, uh, that, that that is an energy that's coming that is hard to get prepared for, but he bounces back tonight. Yeah, I believe he's going to bounce back. They, they lost 30-23 to 23 the first game. Deshaun Watson threw two picks. They weren't able to really run the ball. They're playing at Indy. It, in the Dome, it's going to be pretty loud. This game here can all but decide the division. And, and so they know what's on the line. You don't want to lose two games to a division opponent. It pretty much, you're, you're basically behind two games. Inclu you're going to have to win the rest of your division games, the rest of your AFC games, mm. and it's going to put you behind the eight ball. And so when I look at it, if he can avoid the interceptions, first game he threw two picks. If he can avoid that, he threw for over 300 yards. Um, yeah, I expect him to bounce back. Let me ask you this, TJ, though. Having played with Carson Palmer, other NFL quarterbacks, you've, when a quarterback goes through what he went through just four days ago, it can affect their confidence. It's tough. And when, when a quarterback's affected, it's more so in the pocket. They, the seeing ghost thing is hmm. you, you start to rush yourself mentally when you have more time than you think. That's what it is, is Baltimore affected him mentally when, oh, you got pressure when you really don't have pressure. And the Colts, 
from a defensive, they're stout defensively, but they're not the team that can really just pressure you without blitzing you. And, and so, will it affect them? Yeah, when you play that bad, that's human nature to think, <laughs> mm -hmm. like, don't, don't start the game bad. Because you're going to go back to that sideline like, oh, here we go again. Uh, mm. Let me tell you, the NFL's dirty little secret because nobody wants to know it. Baltimore Ravens are the most unique team in football, and they're probably the best team in football. Yeah. They are physically dominant. And you talk about this defense because nobody gives them credit. You watch them. Wink Martindale, their defensive coordinator. You got to go back to Houston, though. What, so you think I, I'm, get, I'm, get, I'm, gonna get, I'm getting to Houston, right, okay? Just ahead. give me a second. <laughs> Wink Martindale, his whole mantra is win in doubt, play zero coverage. Bring the house. You, yep. you, you're blocking six, we're bringing seven. You're blocking seven, we're bringing eight. That's what they do. Do I think he bounces back? Yeah, he bounces back, one, because he's not playing against Baltimore, <laughs> which is the most <laughs> unique team in football. Hey. They dominate the clock, and they play unbelievably aggressive defense. Two, the short week is an advantage. Mm. Because, one, you have to simplify everything. The best, the, the best that you ever play as a player is when you keep it simple, stupid. And when it it's helps all that you're playing a division opponent that you know very right. well. Right. And then ultimately, when you play poorly, the worst thing you can do is sit and stew in it. You know what you want to do? You want to get right back on the football field and and basically, um, it basically eradicate that last week's performance. So I think all these things line up for the Houston Texans to win this game tonight. Comfort, familiarity, words we just threw out, which makes sense traditionally. But the Colts have beaten them four of the last five times. Something about this matchup, the Colts say, hey, we have your number as well. So it's, it's a worse team you're playing, but it's a team that has figured you out somewhat. So his bounce back, I, oh, it has to happen with him and his relationship with DeAndre Hopkins in terms of going down the field. The deep ball, uh, they talk about the numbers, 67 targets over 20 yards in the last two years. This year, only 11. What's going on with that? I think right now to bring the offense to Deshaun Watson and make it more efficient, they lost their risk. They lost their gamble and they lost their big playability. I'm going to tell you the thing that shook me up the most was the first possession. He starts hopping against Baltimore, starts hopping right. around in the pocket. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, wow, what, what are you? This is, this is the first series of the game. And you're trying to win the game on this play. To, you know, throw it out of bounds, go down to whatever. He fumbles. Yep. And so I thought I was like that first series. I was like, oh man, he's feeling that Lamar pressure, that mm. mental pressure. No, they that Lamar. Pre and so mm. and now you come and that was a afternoon game, 10 a.m. out here on the West Coast, 1 p.m. on the East Coast. Not the brightest spotlight, even though there was a lot of attention. Now here he is in a standalone game with a chance to erase, take that bad taste out of his mouth, erase that memory. And I'm just wondering, are we gonna see him out there again? trying to do too much. I, I think one of the things that happens to you when you play Baltimore, you know you're going to lose possessions. Average game has 12 to 13 <laughs> possessions. Yeah. You're looking at it from the standpoint of I'm facing this ultra-aggressive defense and I'm going to have seven to eight possessions because of the way they run the ball. And so now I try to win on possession number one. And it creates, a, it creates a mistake, it creates a turnover, and then you know what? You're really behind the eight ball. And I think that's what Baltimore does to you as a quarterback and as, to an, as, an, as an offensive football team. When you know, TJ, you've been there, when you know you're only going to get, hey, this half, we're only getting three possessions, man, we got to score every possession. What that does to you as an offense, man, it puts you, it puts you in a There's in times a, when you come in position. at halftime right. and you've had three possessions. <laughs> and offensive coordinator, when you meet, we got to maximize every time we get the ball. We've only had three possessions in the first half, so when we get the ball, we got to make it count. And you're like, oh, yeah, we're going to make it count. But you get that in your head, mm -hmm. like, okay, we got to perform. Now, you got to look at the coach. Marlon Mack, he's hurt. T.Y. Hilton, Marlon Mack is out. T.Y. Yeah. Hilton might not play. T.Y. Hilton is the reason the Texans can't beat the Colts because they yeah. can't seem to stop them. And so Hopkins, 100 yards last game they played the Colts. Kenny Stills, 100 yards last time they played the Colts. If Deshaun Watson doesn't turn the ball over, it looks good. And they're at home. Yeah, I, what I like about Deshaun Watson is how he has that ability. We have the numbers, 4-2 and two in primetime games. He's ready for these moments, 16-2. and two. Good Lord, pass touchdown interception ratio, 121 passer rating. More importantly, if you know his mental makeup, we saw in week six against your Chiefs, and that was a, a MVP moment. And he went there and said, I don't care about that. I'm going to win this game and won that game. 
Baltimore was different. He probably was thinking the same thing. Forget all that. I'm going to deal with this team. Oh. <laughs> they say two things when you watch film you're never going to properly calculate. Speed and energy. You may think he's fast. Like when we used to play Mike Vick. Oh, he, all right, I'm going to get him. Yeah. No, you're not. And then the energy. If they're coming as a collective, as a fist, like Baltimore seems to do, it's going to make everybody have a bad performance. All right, Darnell. Is there a Super 6 tonight? Yes, sir. Before the Colts and Texas kick off tonight, be sure to download the Fox Sports Super 6 app and play for free for a chance to win Terry Bradshaw's 25 Gs. Now, let's win our fans some money. Mm, my We're team. like Marcellus. One of the questions for tonight is, which team will win and by how many points? So, who you got? All right, this is not a pay your mortgage pick. I don't have a lot of confidence in this pick. Well, baby mama rent. Yeah, <laughs> like but, but <laughs> phone bill. Phone bill? Oh, a little down payment. On, pay the cell phone bill down. All right. All right. Take care of Verizon. Uh, Marcella shook me with the Colts have their number. Mm. For, so I'm going to stay with the Colts here. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to say 27-24 Colts. No, what I write here? 27-24 <laughs> Colts. I, don't, I want my phone bill paid. <laughs> Same thing. I think the Colts go out there and beat them, even though Deshaun Watson plays well. Whitlock and Wiley, LeVar Arrington, and TJ Hushmanzada are back. Let's move to this week's big matchup. Sponsored by Capital One, what's in your wallet? Jimmy Garoppolo and the 49ers host Aaron Rodgers and the Packers this Sunday in a matchup with major implications for the NFC playoff picture. The 49ers' defense and running game have carried them to their NFL best 9-1 record, while Jimmy G has been very inconsistent. Uh, while the quarterback's putting up pretty good numbers against sub-500 teams, while the better teams have made him look pedestrian and taken advantage of how loose he is with the football uh, has Jimmy G been a disappointment so far this season? Absolutely not. Nothing Jimmy G has done has been disappointing. For the San Francisco 49ers, where in his 18 career starts, he has a 15-3 and record. Goodness. Everyone is basing this off money, and I understand why you're basing it off the money. But you have to look at it from a different perspective. That money gives them luxury. We have our franchise quarterback. Everyone was talking about Dak Prescott. And why create the anxiety of not saying he's your franchise quarterback? You have him in Jimmy G. Now, everyone's saying, where are the numbers? Jimmy G should be doing more. Let's also look at the dynamic of this team. The defense is playing lights out. They have a strong running game. So now, guess what? We're going to cook up a different formula while you're coming off of ACL injury in a career that has not even spanned longer than two seasons in the NFL. So when you have guys like Kittle injured and Manuel Sanders comes there, looks good, and then he gets banged up, losing your fullback, tackles both gone. Like, people don't understand the long game and what they're playing. They're building them up in terms of confidence and building them up physically. Not a disappointment. No, he's not a disappointment. And the reason I say that is because what did I expect of him coming into the season? It wasn't like, I didn't expect him to be Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, Drew Brees. If I expect that, of course I'd be disappointed. This team is being led by their defense. Number two overall in yards allowed, number two overall in points allowed. They're being led. When they've needed him in big games, has he played great? No, but he hasn't played bad. You, you look at in their closest games against Seattle. Um, he lost that game. He threw a pick. But this past week against Arizona, 34 for 45 for 400-plus yards. Two horrible interceptions. They were horrible. They <laughs> win the game. At the end of the day, wins and losses. He, he's, he's cooked against Arizona. He's played very, very well against Arizona. Um, but I didn't expect. He hadn't started a full season yet. So disappointment, no. He hadn't started enough games. So expect too much of him. I'm going to yeah. piggyback off of it. I don't think he's been a disappointment. Of course, I've been riding that horse from, from day one. They have one. They have one loss, and one. You know, one thing that 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 we need to pay attention to is you're saying his his stats suffered against very good teams, but in reality, your stats are supposed to be better against bad teams. Your stats are supposed to hmm. be a certain way against better teams. That's why they're the better teams. But the reality is, they won. He had one loss. Okay, it's a tough loss against Seattle. But you have to put points on the board to be able to score or to be able to win games. And so your offense has to be able to score at times. Garoppolo has done his job as the quarterback of his team. He doesn't have to be a superstar. They are 9-1. and one. The point is to win games. 
Mm. She's thrown 10 interceptions. Okay. I don't think anybody was expecting this dude to be on pace for 16, 17 interceptions this year. He looks like a, a, a high-class Jameis Winston to me. Uh, and it's great that he gets to play with a great defense that's, that's carrying him. They got a running game. They got one of the best offensive play callers in Kyle Shanahan. But at the end of the day, there's no one in San Francisco on that coaching staff that's not sitting there saying, hey, man, this dude's got to take better care of the football or we're not going to meet our goals. And I don't think – when you – Jimmy G's not some kid. This isn't – he's not in his second year. He's a kid in, tor- in terms of Games playing play. time and game yeah, yeah, experience. Yeah, 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 definitely. He's been under the tutelage of Bill Belichick and Tom Brady and Josh McDaniels. You thought you were getting a, something a little closer to a finished product mm. than a guy who's this loose with the football – plays with the lead a lot, and still Ooh. throwing all these interceptions. I just I, I just don't like it. Your Honor, may I testify? Yeah. Your Honor, I got something to say. I'd like to present this to the courtroom. Look, he's not Tom Brady. Not only is he better than him now, Tom Ooh. Brady, but he was better than Tom Brady in the first 20 games played. Exhibit A! Ooh, Tom Brady versus Jimmy G. So all you purists and historians can lose perspective or respect what Jimmy G is doing. Better win-loss record, better completion percentage, more touchdowns, fewer interceptions, more yards per game. Different. When Tom and Brady came up, it was a different three. league. Hold you, on. You, we, we getting pressed five yards down the field. Now you can't touch it. Different I, league. I, I, different hey, league. Hey, 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 First you, 20 games, different. You could give me all that, but every time we talk about Tom Brady and Jimmy G, we forget that it's a different league until you show that Jimmy G has done better in his opportunities. I just heard Tom Brady name six times, and nobody said different league. Remember Carl Lewis was <laughs> in his prime. You love track of him. Remember oh, yeah. Carl Lewis was in his mm-hmm, prime. Mm-hmm. And Carl That's Lewis's easy. problem in the 100-meter dash was he didn't get out of the blocks that Oh, minute. yeah, it took a minute. <laughs> but you never kidded yourself and thought, oh, because that guy got out of the blocks better, he's going to be better than Carl Lewis. Until Ben no one, Johnson came. Well, and yeah, yeah. and took all them steroids. Analogy. But that's where you're going. And so, look, again, it's a just safe analogy. Just because he done got out of the breaks, out of the blocks better than Tom Brady, you don't kid yourself. You he's not right on now. the Tom Brady. All I'm, saying, them right now. all I'm saying is if you're an evaluator, you, as his coach went out, and while we're talking about this story, Shanahan said, I'm not disappointed in my quarterback because I have perspective. I have actually studied the game. I've seen some of the greats who had slow starts. And guess what? This guy doesn't have as slow a start. You got to have respect for him. They were talking about Nicky Mullins earlier in the <laughs> they year. They were, though. That's and funny, And whether we can get out of this contract. <laughs> Jimmy G's been a disappointment. I can't wait. He, he ain't on Aaron Rodgers' level. These we'll next see three games. Wait, wait. Yeah, now we'll he switched no, it okay. to Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> that's who they playing this weekend. Wait, wait. wait. Talk about uh, who they playing this that's weekend. Fair. Hey, dude, coming up. That's Super Bowl that's stuff. Fair. Uncle Jimmy will return on Monday. All right, let's return to Miles Garrett. Yeah. ESPN's Adam Schefter just tweeted an update about Garrett's allegation. Mason Rudolph used a racial slur against him, tweeting, quote, NFL spokesman Brian McCarthy said the league looked into Miles Garrett's allegations that Mason Rudolph used a racial slur last Thursday night before the brawl and found no such evidence. All right, Marcellus, yeah. I, I'm gonna, I, gotta, I wanna just inject this, and we don't have a lot of time, but <clears throat> the conversation in A Block, B Block, it disappoints me because We've lived through, or in America, as black people, we've lived through where people could just throw allegations at us and they were believed. Emmett Till lost his life because someone could just throw a little silly allegation and white people acted on it and crucified him. I don't want to go back to that time. And I, wanna, I want Mason Rudolph treated the way that I want to be treated. Right. An allegation just isn't good enough. Mm. There's no proof that Mason Rudolph, any of his past behavior, anything, you got Cleveland Browns teammates now saying that, hey, Mason Garrett ne- or Miles Garrett never said any of this to us, and some of them are black teammates. I, I just, I-, I think we owe Mason Rudolph the benefit of the doubt from a guy with Miles Garrett's history and Miles My- Garrett, the bad actor in this, in- the over the top bad actor in this behavior. Well, this to-, to stay in your context of going in the past uh, and how false allegations and accusations were so damning. Uh, many of those in those moments were things that you couldn't prove. And even if you could prove it, our people, you couldn't execute on it. And this is a situation where I am not going to champion for Miles Garrett saying that he actually was the victim of a racial slur that escalated him to a point where he did something that is unfathomable. You should never hit someone with a helmet. But the end, 
doesn't necessarily justify the means in terms of how we got to that place. So we're on a little different path there. I will say this. No one knows for sure if it was said except those in that scrum. And since you can't prove it, doesn't mean you can't state it and can't say this was my emotional well, state. We've turned race into a game. And this sounds just like OJ said. I don't want to compare Miles Garrett to OJ Simpson, mm. but it's like OJ Simpson, no connection to the black community, gets in trouble. Oh my God, it's racism. Yeah. It's racism. Yeah. Miles Garrett, I'm not saying no connection to the black community, but if you just do the research, this ain't the number one brother in the locker room, gets in trouble. <laughs> And now, oh, my God, it's racism. Man. So I have him at the record low zero, complete and total dumpster fire. Uh. Miles Garrett, I hope they never let you back in the NFL. Oh, man, stop that. You're going to regret saying that, no? Uh, but how did job performance stay the same and it's still a zero? Dude had 10 sacks before the suspension. Insane. Not available. 100, baby. You kept it 100.